dinner inspired by Northeastern African cuisine. Bana is busy roasting and grinding coffee beans. So you wait until it gets a little dark brown. Her 10 year old daughter, Honey, is grating ginger. Here. And Grace, the family matriarch, stands by watching with pride. She offers instructions here and there, speaking both English and Tigrinya, her first language. It's a scene that many families would take for granted, putting together a meal at the end of a busy weekday. But Grace says nothing about this moment was guaranteed. I'm happy to live with my family again, you know, because that's what I miss, because my family, that's all I have. Their story is a winding journey through homelessness, incarceration, addiction, and threats of deportation, culminating in sobriety, faith, and family unity. Grace's family is originally from the country of Eritrea, but moved to Sudan due to an ongoing war. Her village was poverty-stricken, and local terrorist groups made it dangerous for girls and young women. We didn't have no light, electrics, and no school. They have a school, but my parents, they scared to send us to school because, you know, they're going to get kill us, kidnap us. She came here at 16 years old with her husband and their one-year-old daughter, Bana. But their marriage soon crumbled. That left Grace lost in this new, unfamiliar place. In this country, I don't have any families at all. Nothing, nothing, you know. She started drinking heavily, partying, searching for community and comfort in the wrong places, with the wrong crowd. I don't care anymore because at that time I, I miss my families and I want to kill my pain. It came at a cost. She got a DUI. Child Protective Services took her children. Grace buried the pain with more drinking. Eventually, she wound up living on the streets. Another DUI landed her in jail and then facing deportation. The Lord, he say, she got to go. The judges say, I'm giving her a chance. The judge believed in Grace, believed that she could get clean and get back on her feet. But another mistake would mean deportation and possibly never seeing her children again. And, you know, after then, I never drink for 12 years. Never drink, never smoke marijuana, never do anything. Her daughter, Bana, around that time, found herself on her own path to recovery. She had a turbulent childhood. She grew up in a group home and then a foster home, dropped out of high school, and, like her mom, Bana struggled with addiction. And then she got pregnant. I changed my life after my daughter, and then I got back on my feet again after my daughter, you know, from, from being homeless, from being on the street. Bana gave birth to her daughter, Honey, and moved into supportive housing. She reconnected with her mother, Grace, who wanted to help provide a better life for her granddaughter. Grace and Bana bonded over a newfound devotion to God and a shared commitment to staying sober. The family found an apartment in an affordable housing complex in City Heights, a coveted spot considering the scarcity of affordable housing in the region. We share the space, you know, taking care of my daughter and me taking care of my mom and my mom taking care of me and my daughter. What's the best part about living with your mom and your grandma? Mm, they're kind and they make problems go away. That's always good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honey is heading into the fifth grade next year, and she's got no shortage of interest in school. And my favorite subject is art, is my first one, and math, and playing with my friends in school, and recess. With stability under one roof, the family is focused on helping others in need, especially people living on the streets. I got donation, I, I gave it to people. They collect donations, anything from adult diapers to bottled water, and Grace hands out home-cooked meals, served with a side of wisdom from the gospel. She has a YouTube page where she posts videos of her outreach work. Bana is busy with classes, making progress towards her high school equivalency degree. She's hoping it will one day lead to a job working with children. Like a child care or babysitting, because I love to work with kids. Looking ahead, Bana hopes to find a bigger place to accommodate the family. I hope and I pray, you know, maybe four or five bedroom apartment, Something, you know, bigger, spacious. <laughs> she knows it might be tough with runaway housing costs in San Diego. But Bana isn't worried. She believes the family, all three generations, will live together for a long time. And that wherever they end up, it's not the number of rooms that define a home, but the people who share the space. Scott Rod, 
KPBS News.